Hey everybody, it is the day after uh, the big release and big announcement day of Visual Studio 2015. Uh, so if you follow me on Twitter, it's James Q. Quick. Uh, you noticed I was probably pretty busy uh, yesterday. I tweeted a lot of things, some of the new features with Visual Studio. Really exciting stuff. Uh, so I wanted to kind of follow up all those different tweets with kind of a short uh, recap video on some of the highlights uh, from my perspective. And I tend to focus on the, the mobile application development side. Um, there's lots of cool things with web and debugging and all sorts of stuff, and I'll mention uh, kind of different pieces here and there. Uh, but that's where I tend to focus. So a lot of cool things that I'm excited about. I wanted to kind of share, like I said, some of those recaps, some of the things that may be uh, worth looking into on your end. Uh, so first, just wanted to mention, I'm here uh, right now on the Channel 9 uh, Visual Studio uh, link. So it's uh, there's several videos here about the announcements and, and certain things in Visual Studio. So it's channel9.msdn.com slash Visual Studio. All sorts of great stuff. Uh, what's new in .NET uh, 2015? The Visual Studio emulator for Android. Talk about that in a minute. Um, TypeScript and Angular 2, again, for you web developers out there. Uh, IntelliTrace in Visual Studio 2015. And building cross-platform using C Sharp. So that's something that I'm in particular really excited about. So again, lots of videos and opportunities here to get a little deeper than what I'm doing today. Today is just kind of a quick recap. Uh, so yeah, so that uh, that's one of the big links there that you can look at. You can also find the Visual Studio blog. So uh, blogs.msdn.com slash Visual Studio will get you there. Then you can pull up uh, this one also. So let's scroll down a little bit so we can go through some of these things. Uh, so what's new in Visual Studio 2015? Uh, so Microsoft in the past, uh, at least in the past couple of years that I've been here, has, has become more and more open in terms of supporting technologies that are not directly uh, Microsoft. So for instance, uh, supporting other mobile platforms and supporting building applications for those mobile platforms. Uh, so last year, I think it was last year, maybe two years ago, I think it was just last year, uh, we came out with support for Apache Cordova, so doing Apache Cordova projects in Visual Studio, so that way uh, you could write basically cross-platform mobile web apps. So some of that has gotten a lot better here. So we, uh, the first one here on the screenshot you can see is uh, is the uh, Android emulator. So the Android emulator looks uh, looks really nice. It looks a lot better. Uh, it got some improvements with the emulator itself, and it uh, one of the added features is that this emulator does not have to be run uh, inside of Visual Studio. You could run this emulator uh, regardless of what kind of development that you're doing. Uh, if you're using a different IDE or maybe you're using doing just native Java, uh, you can use this emulator. So that's a pretty cool thing. Again, something that we may may not have done a couple of years ago. Uh, but we support, uh, like I said, Apache Cordova, and we've also added uh, some pr uh, project templates for Apache Cordova projects. Uh, so Ionic and Onsen templates, not something I've directly uh, played around with, but I've heard Ionic uh, a lot recently, heard it in several different conversations. So to have that template out of the box in Visual Studio uh, to do cross-platform is uh, it's pretty cool. Uh, so another thing uh, that you can do cross-platform with is Xamarin. That's something that I'm going to spend a lot of time with uh, over the next couple of months. So stay, stay tuned for some upcoming videos and blog posts and stuff. Uh, highlighting uh, some of the tooling and, and what it looks like to develop uh, Xamarin applications. So that's kind of uh, really quickly into the um, into the cross-platform story. So let me scroll down a little bit more. So we got some Node.js tools. Uh, the tooling here has, has gotten better. Uh, this is obviously uh, pretty big in the web development community uh, to be able to use and, and, and be able to support that. Uh, Visual Studio Code, this is something announced a couple of months ago, but uh, kind of a lightweight I, or, uh, text editor, not a fully fledged IDE like Visual Studio. Talked a little bit about that. Uh, GitHub and Visual Studio, so uh, publishing to GitHub has become a lot easier. Some of the steps have been taken out to make it a little easier uh, to publish and push uh, to GitHub from inside of Visual Studio. So if you haven't used it inside of Visual Studio, it's pretty nice to work with. Um, instead of going into your command prompt, you could just do it inside of the IDE where you're actually developing. So let me scroll over to some of these other ones and see what I'm missing. Oh, so if you've ever done any application development or uh, kind of anything really with Visual Studio, you probably have used uh, NuGet, so NuGet packages. This in the past has been a um, 
kind of a pop-up window. So now this dialog box is, is what they call modeless. It's just another tab um, in Visual Studio. It looks really nice, uh, uh, kind of a, a little bit better than it did uh, last year. So that's really nice to work with and see that update. Uh, one of the really cool things is that there's now live inspection of XAML, of XAML and live editing. So you can go in and actually change uh, some of these properties of uh, your XAML controls live as you're running it. So one of the previously, if you wanted to see it running on an application, you'd have to run it and then say, oh, maybe the size needs to go down. Go back to the XAML editor, stop running, change the XAML, and uh, go back and forth. Now you can actually run and then interact with that, uh, interact with your XAML live. So this little text box here, box here uh, was a smaller size in the demo, then kind of got uh, bumped up to a bigger size. So that's really cool. Uh, let's see, Lambda debugging. This is a, a big one that people are pretty excited about. So again, Visual Studio 2015, do Lambda debugging. Um, another cool one is sometimes uh, IntelliSense maybe gets a little overwhelming with how many options uh, you get. So here's an example that Scott Hanselman is uh, using to show the two-level IntelliSense in Visual Studio. So let's say you want to um, use Angular you don't necessarily get uh, the ng dash and then so and so so and so so and so all those options immediately you get the ng dash and then after you do that one you can go into the further details so it's kind of that, that two level where you don't see all of those uh, all those potential choices up front you, you kind of get a little deeper and work your way into it a little less overwhelming that way uh, and then we talked about the android emulator being uh, being standalone and being able to be used outside of visual studio as well Another cool one uh, that we saw, and I don't have a, a tab up here for it, uh, but um, if you're doing breakpoints uh, and you're debugging, you can actually uh, set two breakpoints, and then once you go from one to the other, you can see the time elapsed between the two. So if you want to see how long some call to a REST API is taking or something like that, you can just set those two breakpoints and go from one to the other, and it will tell you how much time has elapsed. Pretty cool. Uh, before, you would have to do like your, your own custom timer, start a timer, and then when you get your response back, end the timer and, and inspect the timer. Now it's kind of built in for you. Uh, one of the other really cool stories uh, about, and this was kind of about uh, Azure more general than Visual Studio, but Real Madrid is, is kind of on a similar mobile-first, uh, cloud-first um, rise, and they're using Azure to... Um, to, to reach 450 plus million fans. So that's a, that's a pretty cool story. And again, probably lots of Visual Studio being used there. Uh, so lots of things uh, being updated, lots of new features. Visual Studio just gets bit, uh, better and better. Uh, so like I said, I will be focusing on the uh, mobile application side and a lot with Xamarin. So as a sneak peek, kind of keep an eye out for further videos uh, with um, with those kind of highlights, some of the tooling there and how to build some of those mobile applications. Uh, in the meantime, if you want to follow me on Twitter, I am uh, James Quick. So it's James uh, Q Quick is the handle, at James Q Quick. And stay tuned for more up-and-coming videos.